As the 2024 U.S. presidential elections nears its climax, Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Donald Trump are pulling out all the stops in their final push to win the White House. With just two weeks left before voters head to the polls, both campaigns are focusing intensely on a handful of key battleground states that will ultimately decide the election. The race is resulting with polls showing Harris and Trump locked in a statistical tie, and both candidates know that any misstep or breakthrough in these last days could determine the outcome. Now, let's take a look into the state of the race, the latest polling data, and what we've seen from both campaigns as a scramble to secure every last vote. The latest polling data shows just how close the race is. A survey released on Monday by the Washington Post and Shah School, which polled more than 5,000 registered voters in early October, revealed that both Harris and Trump have secured 47% of voter support. Among likely voters, Harris holds a slight edge, pulling at 49% compared to Trump's 48%. While that's just a 1% difference, it underscores how evenly split the electorate remains, with little room for error on either side. Further complicating the picture, 538 daily election tracker shows Harris with a slim, with a slim 1.8 percentage point lead nationally, though Trump's numbers have crept up slightly in recent days, putting him within striking distance. But why the national polls are important, the real battle will be won in key swing states, particularly Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Nevada. And those four states which hold a combined 51 electoral college votes the candidates are in a virtual tie, with less than half a percentage point separating them. Now, these states often referred to as the blue wall due to their historical tendency to vote democratic will be crucial in deciding the next president of the United States. Both campaigns are fully aware of these, and Harris and Trump have been crisscrossing this battleground, rallying supporters and trying to sway undecided voters. It's going to be interesting how this event unfolds over the couple of days, the next few days, and we're going to see what happens in this state. Now, if either candidates can sweep this four state, it could effectively guarantee their path to the presidency, making the final weeks of campaigning all the more critical. Kamala Harris has been working tirelessly to shore up support in key states and broaden her appeal beyond democratic base. On Monday, she embarked on a tour through the Blue Wall State, starting in Pennsylvania and making stops in Michigan and Wisconsin. In Marvin, Pennsylvania, Harris appeared alongside former Republican Congresswoman Liz Cheney in a move designed to appeal to moderate Republicans who are disillusioned with Trump. Cheney, who has been one of the most vocal Republican critics of Trump since his time in office, made a passionate appeal to voters to prioritize country over party. Speaking on another banner, Cheney urged fellow Republicans to consider Harris as a viable alternative to Trump, praising her leadership and warning of the dangers she believes Trump poses to Americans, to America's democracy, of course. The endorsement from such a prominent Republican figure is a significant coup for Harris as he tries to peel away moderate GOP voters in crucial swing states. In Michigan, Harris' campaign received another boost from an unlikely source. Susan Ford bills the daughter of former Republican President Gerald Ford. Through her support behind Harris, this is really, this is a big support. This is a big endorsement for Kamala Harris. Now, this endorsement further highlights the growing divide within the Republican Party as more centrist figures distance themselves from Trump's branded politics. With Ford bills and Cheney backing her campaign, Harris is making a direct appeal to Republicans who may feel alienated by Trump's rhetoric and leadership. Now, despite the endorsement, Harris candidly admitted that the strain of their campaign is starting to affect her. Of course, there's bound to be strain in a keenly contested election like this one. When asked by reporters in Michigan how she's managing the stress of the race, she revealed that she often wakes up in the middle of the night struggling to sleep. The Harris campaign has also leveraged high-profile Democratic figures to energize the base. On Tuesday, former President Barack Obama will campaign alongside Harris in Detroit, a move aimed at boosting turnout in Michigan, which is seen as one of the pivotal battlegrounds. Obama remains one of the most popular figures in the Democratic Party, and his presence on the campaign trail is intended to reignite enthusiasm, especially among young voters and African Americans. His wife, Michelle Obama, will also hit the trail later this week, making her first campaign appearance in Michigan on October 26, signaling a coordinated effort to lock down the state for Harris.
On the Republican side, Donald Trump is doubling down on his efforts to win over voters in swing states, especially in places where the margins are resulting. On Monday, Trump campaigned in North Carolina, a state he has won in the past, but he what, a state he has won in the past, but where polls show him locked in a tight race with Harris this year. The race is tighter this in North Carolina as there is no margin for error this time around. According to 538 polling averages, Trump holds a narrow lead of less than one percentage point in North Carolina, but the race is far from secure. Trump's visit to Asheville, North Carolina, which, has, which was hit hard by Hurricane Helen last month, was part campaign stop, part disaster tour. While surveying the storm damage, Trump expressed sympathy to the victims, but he also sees the opportunity to make political points. Speaking to reporters, Trump claimed that federal disaster relief funds had been diverted to help undocumented immigrants, saying they didn't have any money left. He said that they didn't have any money left for North Carolina because they are spending it on the illegals. This area was hit about as hard as anybody's ever seen to all those homes, and your homes have been destroyed. Many of you are rebuilding, and many of you are going to just start all over again. And the communities were ravaged and destroyed. We're praying for you, and we will not forget about you. We will never forget about you. We're going to be working with you for a long time to come to get it back together. When I'm president, I will stand with you until the communities are fully rebuilt. Every single inch of every property will be fully rebuilt, greater and more beautiful than it was before. You're going to have better. What happened to this neighborhood and the communities all across North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida, Alabama, Virginia, Tennessee, was an act of absolute devastation. Helene's vicious floodwaters tore wives from the arms of their husbands, mudslides, buried the entire families and buried entire families. Grandparents died alongside their grandchildren. Homes, towns, farms, roads, bridges, schools throughout the region, they now lie in ruin. So beautiful, so beautiful an area, so beautiful it was, but it'll be more beautiful but you can never forget the death, I, the death. All of America shares your sorrow and your grief over the past few weeks. This region has seen an extraordinary hardship, but in the midst of such terrible tragedy, we have also seen the extraordinary love that binds us together as Americans. And it does indeed. I want to thank our great first responders. I, they've never let us down. They never, this was a tough one, but they never let us down. And the emergency personnel who leapt into action with such great heroism. Americans in this region felt helpless and abandoned and left behind by their government. And yet in North Carolina's hour of desperation, the American people answered the call much more so than your federal government, unfortunately. Citizens poured into Western North Carolina from all over the country, bringing food, water, fuel, medical aid, even helicopters, and their own uh, rescue standards started, and they started at a very high level, credible, what they've done. Having no experience, they learned very quickly, but they've helped so much. Nothing is more inspiring than to see the American spirit triumph over adversity with the most selfless acts of generosity and love. In the final weeks of the campaign, Trump's message has remained largely consistent he is the outsider fighting for forgotten Americans, and the system is rigged against him. Of course, despite no evidence of widespread voter fraud in the 2020 election, Trump continues to insist that the last election was stolen from him, and he has reportedly warned again without evidence that Democrats are trying to rig the 2024 election as well. Now, this narrative has resonated with Trump's course of voters, many of whom remain deeply skeptical of the electoral process and see Trump as a champion of their own grievances. Why Trump's strategy of energizing his base has been effective in solidifying his support among Republicans it remains to be seen whether he can expand his appeal well enough to win undecided voters in swing states like North Carolina. Trump himself has acknowledged that the outcome of the election will likely depend on turnout, urging his supporters not to let anything, including the hurricane's aftermath, deter them from voting. He told them, you must get out and vote 
It showed a crowd in Asheville where trades in the, for the, that the stakes are too high for anyone to stay at home on election day. Now, Trump's schedule for the coming days underscores his focus on key constituencies. On Tuesday, he will host a roundtable with Latino business leaders in Miami, hoping to shore up support among Hispanic voters, a demographic that could play a pivotal role in states like Florida and Arizona. Later that day, Trump will return to North Carolina for a rally in Greensboro as his campaign continues its push in swing states where even small margins could make all the difference. With early voting now underway in most states, both campaigns are shifting their focus to turning out their base. Democrats have been heavily focused on getting their supporters to vote early, with Harris and Obama both emphasizing the importance of making sure every eligible voter casts their ballot. In Michigan, where Harris campaigned among the Democratic Party, has been holding voter registration drives on campusing in key cities like Detroit and Grand Rapids to ensure that turnout is as high as possible. Republicans, meanwhile, are emphasizing the importance of voting on election day, with Trump repeatedly encouraging his supporters to wait until November 5 to cast their ballots. However, the Republican Party has also been active in pushing for early voting in key states like North Carolina, where turnout could determine the final outcome. Trump's campaign has been sending out reminders to supporters in states like Michigan, where Monday was the last day to register to vote. Looking ahead, both Harris and Trump have a packed schedule for and a lot of campaign stops, rallies, and media appearances. Harris is scheduled to appear in Georgia later this week with Barack Obama, while Trump will head to Florida and Pennsylvania, two states that could swing the election. Both candidates have one clear message for their supporters, votes and votes in record numbers. As we approach November 5th, the 2024 U.S. presidential race has entered its most critical phase. Kamala Harris and Donald Trump are locked in one of the closest and most fiercely contested elections in recent history, with polls showing a dead heat across the country, and particularly in key battleground states. Over the next two weeks, both candidates will be making their final pitches to voters, hoping to secure the turnout they need to win. While Harris seeks to build a broad coalition of Democrats, independents, and disillusioned Republicans, Trump remains focused on energizing his core supporters, casting doubts on the legitimacy of the electoral process. Both candidates know that the outcome of this election will hinge on a few crucial states and the pressure is mounting as election day draws near. Stay with us as we continue to follow this historic race for the White House with so much at stake, every vote we count, and the next two weeks will be decisive in determining who becomes America's next president.